Hello everybody, welcome along. It is Thursday morning and if this video is seeing the light of day, that means that Nathan Jones has made, is it an unlikely return? I think it's an unlikely return back to Luton Town. Um, I'm going ahead of any announcement here because I've got to go shopping later and I want to be on the ball with this one. But the Telegraph last night um, went with a report. The Daily Mail have followed up and we've had um, football writer Peter O'Rourke saying that Jones has actually taken training with Luton today, this morning, and we're going to get an announcement later on. So um, that would intimate that it has happened, stroke has happened if you're watching this. So um, quite the story and quite the interesting return that I'm sure will get some differing opinions from Stoke fans and from Luton fans particularly. And Jones had become a bit of a name that was starting to get thrown about for, you know, upper level League One clubs and championship clubs um, with the sort of job market as well. So let's try and go through the points of this story, not necessarily in order, but as I kind of remember them, because I've been following fairly closely. Um, didn't follow Luton when they were in League One, but certainly been to a few games um, at Luton this season and um, a number of Stoke games under Nathan Jones as well. So the story kind of starts in League One when a really excellent Luton team um, finds their way at Christmas and um, going into the new year, I think it's when he made the jump, um, right up at the top of the league, playing really, really well, but not just top in the division, but actually kind of standing out tactically in that um, the way they were playing with the diamond midfield and the two fullbacks, Stacey and Justin, um, really stars all the way up and down the sides of the pitch. They had a front two and a number 10 in as well. Collins and Cornick scoring the goals. And um, it was just this idea of this really good team that um, played good football, that counter-attacked, that rotated in midfield and had these um, attacking fullbacks that was very kind of modern and um, a bit of a standout in League One, to be honest. So Luton are up there at the top of the league and Jones gets the opportunity to go and manage Stoke City, um, which uh, anyone reasonably would say um, is a big club, been in the Premier League a long, long while. But moreover, in the Championship and in receipt of parachute payments as well. So if you are a young manager and you're trying to find your way into that Premier League job, um, a championship team in receipt of parachute payments is somewhere you probably want to be, isn't it? So um, here's where you get your first dilemma. Um, should he have stayed um, on at Luton and seen them over the finish line? Should he have made the jump? How many of us would have turned down that opportunity? Um, the state of play at Stoke, of course, get your opinions in the comments on that. The state of play at Stoke was that Gary Rowett had been given the job. He'd been at Derby and got to the playoff final and very um, well known in the championship. I think he's had five different championship jobs now. Um, something of that nature, some fact check, going back from wrong about that. Him and Gary Monk seem to have done most of the jobs there. Um, Rowett had kind of failed miserably, really. He'd spent lots and lots of the parachute money. And um, I think Stoke um, had this kind of inertia thing sliding down and hadn't been winning for a long time and had been propping up. And then you get the issue of uh, squad players, you know, players that were signed for over £10 million on big wages and trying to sort that out. And Rowett had really struggled with that and obviously bitten the bullet only three months in. So off goes Nathan Jones to Stoke and keeping an eye on Luton at this point. Um, Mick Harford's always around at Luton and uh, they do the really sensible thing. They slide Mick Harford in. They say the team's functioning well. He's built a good side. Um, just, you know, just do the man management, um, do your Mick Harford thing and get us over the line. So um, to Park Luton now, 
Harford takes over. They announced that Graham Jones, who was at West Brom, is going to take over in the summer. And up go Luton as champions um, of League One. And yes, Mick Harford, um, you know, got them over the line. Obviously, January is a fairly long time, but don't be under illusions. That was Nathan Jones' team and Nathan Jones' tactics. And frankly, we still see this season when we come to talk about um, Luton under Graham Jones a little bit. Um, back off to Stoke, and um, there's a ridiculous transfer window. Lots of loan players come in, and people come in in and out, and um, Jones really struggles. And I saw his Stoke team down at Ipswich. Um, I remember Ipswich were awful um, last season, and uh, they got a 1-1 draw against Stoke, and it seemed like it wasn't working. He was trying to play the system that he played at Luton and all seemed a bit static in it. Um, what it seemed was a bit sort of counterintuitive that um, players need a certain amount of freedom and ability to play off the cuff and it seemed like they were too busy worrying about where they should be and all the instructions. Obviously, we see from Bielsa's leads that when there's a bit of time to embed that and it's done well, it's um, pretty brilliant, isn't it? But Jones coming in in the middle of the season um, and then a change of players and all of a sudden you're now looking at a bit of a Premier League squad, a bit of a Rowett squad, a bit of a Jones squad. So um, Stoke was a mess, but Jones couldn't get to grips with it. We come into this season now, Luton are promoted back into the Championship, but the two star fullbacks, Stacey and Justin, off they go to Bournemouth and to Leicester, but they do uh, retain um, the two good centre-backs, Bradley and Pearson, uh, Cornick and Collins are still up front. They managed to get Izzy Brown in. They've still got Panzu, So still a decent um, side, Luton, but so much of that Jones diamond narrow midfield relies on the fullbacks. But Graham Jones has come in there now. Let's talk about Nathan Jones, who's off at Stoke, and it's just a disaster, isn't it? He... Um, Again, has a busy transfer window. So, again, I'll reiterate, some Premier League players, some Rowett players, some Jones Window 1 players, some Jones Window 2 players, and then you know the writing's on the wall and the disaster's happening. Um, to be fair, if you look at XG and stats for August, they were losing games that they should have been winning. And obviously... Confidence has then gone, and we've all seen it. You get teams, they play well for 20 minutes. The other team sniffs the penalty box and scores, and then away you go, and you think, how have we lost this game? But Stoke were losing over and over again, and then you start to see different teams, different formations. I saw exactly the same thing as Ipswich collapsed in 18-19, and then the goalkeepers are starting to make individual mistakes, and Butland fell off a cliff. And... A long story short, I think you got a stay of execution at um, Swansea, wasn't it? Which was a very strange parallel because Paul Hurst got the same the year before at Ipswich. But in the end, out goes Nathan Jones. In comes Michael O'Neill. And to conclude with Stoke, um, he's picked the results up and you're going to have one year of parachute payments next year. Still bet 365 money. But... Um, I think by all standards, Nathan Jones failed badly at Stoke. Some of it would have been his doing. Some of it was uh, recruitment and all different kinds of players um, from different eras on different wages and disparate recruitment. But you have to say he went in and it didn't work. Um, so he's now unemployed, which brings us back to Luton, who start the season using his tactics. And it seems like Graham Jones is going to pull a Claudio Ranieri thing here. And in the same way Ranieri, um, well, did extremely well, obviously, to win the championship with Leicester, but use the team he's got already and just tweak it slightly. As I said, Izzy Brown came in um, as the number 10, um, invested money in an expensive goalkeeper that uh, didn't particularly work out well. It may still come good, but... Um, I think they tried to be prudent in that end of the pitch and uh, maybe if you'd spent the money elsewhere, uh, things might have been different for Graham Jones. But um, through the first months of the season, Luton in games, conceding loads of goals, often sort of losing by one and you know being reasonably competitive. Um, I saw them draw 3-3 on the opening day. Brilliant game against Borough. I saw them beat Bristol City 3-0 actually. 
when it clicked, um, really, really good, but so leaky, so open, and um, down in the bottom three for most of it, and I think most Luton fans would call attention to 7-0 at uh, Brentford, and um, I've referenced those games quite a lot because there was a sense, and we saw this weird surge around sort of February, March time, where Wigan went on a run, and Barnsley went on a run, and Luton themselves went on a run, and um, it shocked me quite a bit. Actually, the whole of these bottom teams all managed to start winning, and the tide rose and pulled in teams like Charlton and Hull, in fact. But as they rose together, it was only really Wigan that managed to power out of it down there. And what I did see from Graham Jones towards the end of his tenure was a little bit more of a pulling in of the openness and the freedom. And I was at the re reverse fixture against Brentford where it poured down with rain in a midweek and Luton scored from a couple of set plays, uh, played a low block, uh, didn't allow the Brentford front three to have space and won the game. And you did see a kind of little twist of Graham Jones saying, look, OK, you won League One, swashbuckling tactics, really open. I tried it. It didn't work. We're going to be a little bit more pragmatic. Um, there was a bit of a sense. So then we go into lockdown and um, it's only a couple of weeks in. I did a video on it. Maybe not even that. And we get this announcement from Luton that they are going to be um, removing Graham Jones from the job. Mick Harford's going to have it again. And it was kind of like a mothballing exercise that they wouldn't be making any announcement on management until they were more clued in on what football was going to do. Now, uh, many conspiracy theorists here will conclude that they've been talking to Nathan Jones and the idea that um, he would be willing to come back um, if and when football restarts. And um, obviously, you may have the chairman and the, um, is it Gary Sweet there, the chief exec, thinking, well, this worked before. He knows the players. He knows the clubs. We're in the bottom three. If we do go down to League One, he's literally the last manager to win League One. Um, so um, I'm sure Mark Robbins will replace him in that regard in the next few days. But um, it does seem on the surface to be sensible. So Graham Jones is... Um, out he goes and, you know, we expect a new announcement to come in. There was a few people said Nathan Jones at the time and a few Luton fans uh, said to me, no, 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 um, he went off, he left us in the lurch, we don't want him back. But um, it would stand to reason, wouldn't it, that they wouldn't have made the mothball call on Graham Jones if Nathan Jones wasn't, oh, I won't say um, tapped up, but if they didn't have some idea that he would be willing to come back to work there. So um, all very interesting. Hopefully we've now had the announcement if you're seeing this video and Nathan Jones is back at Luton. So several things I want people's opinions on. Um, firstly, should he have gone in the first place? Is a year two parachute club like Stoke in the championship too big an offer to pass up when you're managing in League One, albeit right at the top of League One? with Luton. Was that the right call? Obviously with hindsight it didn't go well, but how many of us, given that um, situation choice to make, would have made different? Secondly, why did it go so wrong at Stoke? Can we attribute blame to the chaotic nature of a club coming down and readjusting to the championship and three different managers in three years and four different recruitment periods, all by you know different people in different methods? Can we attribute some of the blame to um, to the club? Can we attribute some of the blame to the players who seem to be performing his instructions almost to the letter and underlying metrics were saying this will come good, but it just never did. And then we start seeing different goalie, three at the back, different system, 4-3-3, three, three, no, more, no more diamond. He second-guessed himself. So how much blame goes to Jones, the players of the club at Stoke? And now... The big issue is, is it the right call to bring him back? In positive terms, he knows the club, he knows a lot of the players, he knows the surroundings, he knows League One. Hey, God, we don't know what's going to happen. Could come in and have a massive spurt and keep them all up. Obviously, again, he doesn't have his fullbacks, but he does have Izzy Brown now that he didn't have um, down in League One, who's an excellent player 
at championship level and certainly um, in terms of um, you know, sort of ability, probably the best player in the Luton squad despite being um, a low knee. Um, so if you weigh up all the positives, is it a good appointment or do we get that never go back syndrome and it doesn't work out quite as well the second time? Uh, really interesting one to kind of um, unpick. That's my reading of the story. Um, I'm not sure how it would go out. I'll leave it to people in the comments to let me know what they think. Um, if you've got um, a loot and allegiance, please tell me whether you're pleased to see him back, whether you can put him walking out past. If you think he's... Could you get anyone better for the job there? Uh, loot and a League One promotion on his CV, a former manager, knows most of the players. And, and when it's going right, clearly um, a good tactical innovator as well. Or... As we've seen already um, reading my Twitter feed, a lot of Luton fans saying, nah, not interested, um, not happy with him. He left us in the lurch. So let me know what you think down in the comments. Luton fan, Stoke fan, Championship fan, any football fan on Nathan Jones' return to football, which hopefully has been announced if you're seeing this video. Um, should be able to do a stream later on today. Again, don't know what time this one will go up. It's 11.41 now, so um, not sure when, uh, if and when Luton will announce. And... Um, if it doesn't happen, no one will ever see this video and I'll just hit delete. So um, if you're seeing this video, it has happened. Um, so yeah, if you're in here for the first time, uh, subscribe, get involved in the comments and do hit that like button, which is very, very helpful. Um, you can donate to the channel through super chats and donations as well or support me monetarily on Patreon. Um, if you are not willing to do that and there's no obligation to do so, obviously happy just to have the interactions um, at the moment, then do hit follow on Twitter and support me there. All of those things are free. Um, so hopefully we can provide some good football content. But moreover, get your comments in on the return of Nathan Jones to Luton and all of those factors in that story that we've gone through and who would have seen it panning out quite like this. Let me know what you think in the comments as Nathan Jones returns back to Luton. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video. Over now.